Welcome into Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. They're all about the Champions League final today. Craig Burley with me in the studio. Frank LeBeouf uh, joins us as well. Uh, Craig, after their defeat today at Manchester City, much more likely to sign either Kane or Haaland this summer. Uh, I, I don't think it has any bearing on uh, their transfer recruitment, to be quite frank with you. I think they'll have made up their mind what they're going to try and do. Mm -hmm. This defeat has nothing to do with they didn't have a striker. This is more to do with team selection from the manager on this occasion. I, I, that's my opinion anyway. Uh, but I don't, think it, I don't think it changes the fact. I think they were probably always going to go and try and get that done. But let, let's not forget, uh, at one point, I believe they wanted Harry Maguire before he went to United yes. and were not prepared to yep. match what Leicester wanted. So just because you want these players uh, depends whether you're going to push the boat out for them or not because there will be other suitors. Frank, are German coaches officially the best in the world with Klopp, Flick and Tuchel winning the Champions League in the last three years? Yeah, that's the do, best point you've say, made. Uh, oh. Yeah. No, no, but I have no, I have no problem with that. You know, they, they're showing um, consistency and they're showing ideas. They're very, they're very much showing ideas because it's different football. Liverpool is more direct. Tuchel is more defensive and uh, more, a little bit tiki taka. Where Flick is a little bit a mix of of the two. So uh, I'm very pleased with uh, those football. So let's keep on doing. German people. Uh, Frank, remind us what you were saying off camera about PSG. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just thought that Emery won the Europa League. Yep. Tuchel won the Champions League. I heard yesterday that Pochettino wants to leave the club. I think there is something much to do, you know, especially <laughs> after Pochettino words. Seeing, seeing that there is no hierarchy whatsoever at the club, thing that we know for almost 10 years there, yeah. where the players, they go up or the, 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 the coach to complain. But when you see Emery winning his fourth uh, title in Europa League, okay, but Tuchel winning the Champions League, it makes me wonder, you know, what's wrong with Paris Saint-Germain, yeah. even if I know the answer. <laughs> uh, is Kante the best midfielder of this century, Frank? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I, I guess it is. But we have a, a kind of a heritage with uh, uh, players with the, the, the physique and the, the way of playing that, that way in France. We have Jean Tigana for the eldest, yeah. then Makelele, sure. then uh, Jara, and now we have Kante. Mm. Same type of player, that's amazing. And fantastic, all players, but I think Kante is maybe the best of, of them. I mean, that guy is amazing. I mean, in 2012, he was playing in the League Two in Caen, and he won everything in within like five years. And, and grew up like crazy, I'm an amazing player. Frank, I'm thinking if he was English or American or Scottish, he would be a superstar in our respective countries. But I get the feeling in France, maybe he isn't. Is that fair? He is, he is a superstar, oh. but because he's not in the media yeah. and doesn't really care, you know, he has an old car, he, he, he doesn't go into TVs, he's very shy. Nobody bother him. It, what, what amazed me the most is, there is not somebody in the world who hates N'Golo Kante. Mm. They're going to hate you, they're going to hate Craig, and I'm sure they, they, they have the right to, but <laughs> they're going to hate me, yeah. but nobody hates N'Golo Kante. Every, and it's worse, everybody loves N'Golo Kante. It's too nice. It's, it's, crazy. It's, it's true, it's true though, isn't it? Like, what if you did, there's obviously something wrong with you. Well, I, I don't think... I think people get a misconception about punditry. It's not about liking. It's about yeah. it's about analysing. No, but and anyone who likes football in general, if you've got a problem with Kante, well, you have got... to admire what, as Frank said, you have to have an admiration for how far he's come. Yeah, and to what level he's come, arrived from where he was at, as Frank said, in the lower levels of French football, to come be superbly recruited by Leicester City, and their recruitment of players in recent years has been been, been sublime. Then to win the league there and go on now, be, a, be a, a regular for France and be such an important player for France. And then to play in the manner in which 
he did uh, again. And we go back to, you know, we talked about Bruno Fernandes the other day uh, and, and there are other players, you know, complaining all the time. And he's not alone when you see players complaining. Even when you see Kante getting a free kick against him or somebody's kicked him or it doesn't, a decision doesn't go his way, I don't, and maybe he has, but I don't remember him getting up and the first thing that comes to his head is he's in the referee's face. He normally just brushes himself down, yeah. sort of accepts the decision, gets back in and prepares to get on with the game. That's what I'm... From a manager's point of view, that's a dream. Yeah, it must be a teammate's dream as well, knowing that he's going to be there all the time. Well, I have to say, I played with somebody, I'm not comparing them, but Paul Lambert at Celtic didn't have the energy that, that uh, and drive to get around the field that N'Golo Kante did. But Paul was one of the best at reading a game, particularly when he came back from Dortmund. He went to Dortmund as a, as a, as a journeyman and Otmar Hitzfeld turned him into, uh, won a Champions League for, winner when they beat Juventus. And two, one of the cleverest holding midfielders in Europe. And in my time at Celtic playing with him, that just freed me up to go yeah. and score some goals from the middle of the park, knowing that this guy was behind just reading the game and he, he loved doing that. So he should have got the player of the season ahead of you, really, in the football right? Well, maybe if he'd scored a few more goals, you know. <laughs> but, I, but Paul, you know, just to give you an idea how important these players are, and that's why the big discussion on our show today was the lack of Fernandinho in particular or Rodri in the City team. Yeah. Because it's not all about the goal scorers. It's not all about, about the De Bruyne's. It's not all about the Mounts and the Havertz and, and, and all these players. This is such an important role in the team. City didn't have it today and Kante delivers it in bucket loads when fit. Craig, what would you say about Pep now? Is he a serial choker or an overthinker? Well, he's not a serial choker because I pre presume this is a Man United fan. I, I don't know. I would imagine who doesn't get the context of them <laughs> being able to win nothing. No, he's overthinking these big games. I mean, they have basically wiped the floor along with Liverpool domestically, uh, cleaned up in the last two or three years. However, this sort of anvil around his neck is not going to go away until he wins this competition. Mm. But make no bones about it. If somebody handed me a football club tomorrow as a gift and said, pick any manager you want. I mean, it's close yeah. with Klopp and a few others, but I'd probably go for him. Really? Yeah, Guardiola. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th this is a this is a bugbear. There's no doubt about it. But it's definitely overthinking for me. The man, in terms of coaching and the way his teams play, and Frank said it in the show. He's been a genius of his generation. There's no, there's no getting away. It's a bit like you saying, people saying you can't hate N'Golo Kante. If you can't admit the talent as a coach this man has, then you just don't understand the game. Right. Uh, is Chelsea's transfer spending, Frank, showing us that investing in a bunch of quality players is better than spending 200 million on one player, for example, Neymar? I don't know. Really, I don't know if there is a uh, consequences of what happened last year and the fact that they spent. <laughs> I, I believe. I believe in, uh, in 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 the way that you have to be solid everywhere. I, there is a big question mark now, and we saw that we saw it two years ago with Liverpool. We saw it last year with Bayern Munich, and we we see it tonight with Chelsea, where. A team is more important than a, a mega star. I'm not talking about stars because every club they have stars, but I'm talking about mega stars. Ronaldo in Juventus, Messi in Barcelona, um, Neymar in Paris Saint Germain with uh, Mbappe. It doesn't really work. It, and it's not because of those players, it's just because of the, the clubs and the teams where the, those players play for, they build the team around them. Mm. It can't work anymore like that. It can't work. So, is it Neymar's fault or Mbappe or, or Messi or Ronaldo? Of course not. But those players have to understand that if they don't run and don't play for the others, it's not going to work. Let, and today, tonight, we had another example. Let me debunk this point slightly. I, I, I see the point of the tweet. Let me just sort of... This is kind of weird. <clears throat> yes, Chelsea have had this great success in the Champions League. But this tweet in particular talks about bringing these players in. Yeah. Let's let's analyse some of the signings. Right. Havertz has scored in this Champions League game. Yeah. Kai Havertz 
has not had a good season. Right. Timo Werner has not had a particularly good season. Yeah. Hakim Ziyech has not had sure. a particularly good season. Those were three of the big signings of the summer. Yeah. So Chelsea have got it done, and Tuchel has got it done, and early in the season it was Lampard. And yes, these are these are good players. There's no doubt about that. And Havertz is a talented younger player. These are good players, but these three players have not had a good seasons if you take the season as a whole, but they've had a great night, sure. particularly in the Champions League. So that's a slightly weird one because, yeah, they've signed all these players, but they actually have been three of Chelsea's poorer players. Yeah. The better players have been Kante and Jorginho's played better and Kovacic early in the season played better and Mason Mount's been better than these players. But I suppose you could say, well, it's a depth of squad. Yeah. But we've certainly not seen the best of those three. Not from the form they had at their previous clubs. You're back tomorrow, aren't you, as well? Why are you doing Yeah, well, somebody scheduled me on a Sunday this week as well. Oh, and I think I know well. who it is. That, that'll be fun. Thank you very much. Are you on tomorrow? Yes, of course hey, I am. I'm working from home, though. Oh, you're working from home? Yeah, I'm not you're coming not in here. Oh, OK. No, I couldn't see you two days. Now. Oh, that makes it easier, then. Uh, Craig, they're back with us tomorrow. I imagine more reaction to the Champions League final. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.